water levels. Water levels are infamous for being the worst levels in 2D platformers, and even some 3D platformers for that matter. They feel obnoxious and cheap. They're often the most hated stages in their respective games, and when playing through a new game for the first time, people will grumble and groan about the water level before they've even seen what it looks like. But why do water levels get so much hatred? And more importantly, how do we make a good water level? Well, there's a lot of factors to take into account. In a platformer game, 2D or 3D, the movement is the bread and butter of the game. Your level design can be perfect. You can have the perfect theme, an incredible storyline, and a really cool and unique mechanic in your game. But if it doesn't feel fun to run and jump around in a blank and empty room, then your game's not going to be fun. Platformers need their platforming to feel fun, there's no surprise there. So when developers work on platformers, they spend the vast majority of their time making the movement feel as fun as possible. Nintendo very famously use a very bottom-up design philosophy for this very reason. When Super Mario 64 was first being designed, Nintendo spent weeks of development in a textureless blank room with Mario just jumping around, trying to make it feel fun to move around. And it is fun to move around. This applies to every single platformer. If the game isn't fun to move around in, then the game isn't fun, and giant chunks of development time are spent working on this. There will be maybe three or four water levels in an entire game. The rest of the game will be comprised of that crisp and clean movement that the developers have worked so hard on. So it's possible that the movement in these water levels wasn't worked on for quite as long in the development stage. So the movement feels a lot less refined in the water levels than the movement in the rest of the game, which makes those levels less fun. The movement changes from being fast and responsive to being slow, floaty and imprecise. If we want to take a look at a game with good water levels that solves this issue to a degree, we can take a look at Celeste. Chapter 6 is where we find our water levels, and Chapter 6 is in my opinion one of the best chapters in the game. If we take a look at this level for a second, you'll notice immediately that unlike your standard Mario game's water level, Madeline isn't entirely submerged in water. There is water in a number of the rooms that she has to swim through, but some rooms are completely dry. Most of the rooms with water in them still have a bunch of dry land for you to use, so you can still have that same awesome movement that you're used to in the rest of the game. Most of the rooms don't even have water in them at all, so you could say it's a little bit unfair to call them water levels, but that's kind of the point. One of the ways that Celeste makes their water levels fun is by not having that much water in their water levels. Madeline's movement is also very fast in the water because she can dash through it, so instead of having a slow and imprecise water level, you get a very fast paced and responsive water level. Essentially, Celeste makes a good water level by not having the water level feel that much different from every other level in the game. The water levels in the Mario series are extremely different from the rest of the game, and not in a good way. Whereas in Celeste, the game still feels familiar in the water levels, it just gives you new and interesting mechanics to play around with. In the Mario series, water levels feel like an unwelcome change of pace, but Celeste keeps the pacing exactly the same, while just making the water an interesting mechanic that is sporadically added to the level. But we've really brushed over the core reason why people don't like water levels. It's the slow and imprecise movement. The arcade and NES era was riddled with games that had water levels that followed that sort of similar formula. You float around in the water, pressing jump makes you bob upwards slightly, but you sink to the bottom otherwise, and your movement is slowed to half of what it would be on land. The sheer number of games that use this style of water levels is what gives the water levels today the reputation that they have. But Celeste isn't the only game with good water movement in their water level. Ori and the Will of the Wisps has the Luma Pools, which is their respective water level. If we look at this stage, we can once again see that there is drier land next to the water, giving you a break from the water sections every now and again. Not only that, but Ori's movement in the water is fairly precise. She's quite the nimble swimmer, even if she's a little bit slower on the water than she is on land. But her accuracy makes it more fun to move. Instead of trying to bumble your way between two bloopers, you can precisely swim between the enemies. A little way into the level, Ori unlocks a water dash ability. This ability makes Ori faster in the water than she is on land. She's able to dash rapidly through the water and even leap from the water with a dash. 
This ability is a big part of why the Luma pools are so much fun. It keeps the pace really, really high, and it feels like the movement in the water had just as much time spent on it as the movement on land. Water levels get a bad rap from historic examples of slow, clunky, and downright terrible water levels. But modern platformers have great water levels. These examples of good water levels avoid the biggest pitfalls of water levels in a creative way. They make sure that the movement has time and care spent on it just like the rest of the game, and they make sure that the pacing of the game doesn't slow down too much during the water sections. But despite all of this, we still continue to whine and moan every single time we see a water level in a game. Thanks for watching.